what we are trying to get out of this panel is an actual, a better picture, more the like, perhaps a bit more the business uh, reality of, of EU-China relations at the moment. Look at the glass as half full. So even from the EU perspective, I think what you need to do is to look at the opportunity and don't really start from the problem. That is my first advice. The second advice is you listen to the business. And that's exactly why we would certainly favor an FTA between the uh, EU and, and, and China. It would, certainly, it would basically benefit us in, in all terms of what we can see. Uh, we also are quite optimistic that something like that can be achieved. But interestingly enough, trade policy is a little bit like astrology. Suddenly the stars are right, suddenly things might happen. And I think if we look at the stars, they are pointing towards the direction that inevitably should work in favor of free trade agreement. It's bizarre how we haven't, how we focused on the challenges with the trade relations with China when it is probably the trade relations that have benefited us most in the last decades. Unlike Christopher, I of course expect DG Trade to begin Friday morning on this. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it because uh, if you don't enter into an FTA with, uh, with China, maybe somebody else will do uh, before we even consider it and um, then we might be stuck. And China has a number of partners that are also partners for the EU. And these partners have already an FTA. When an FTA with China would have to draw a lot of capacity, it has to be post-Japan, post-TTIP for example. Because if we're not able to deliver or just, if, if TTIP goes through some doaification and, and drags on for years, it's hard, it's hard to believe in an EU-China FTA if we can't even politically deliver on, the, upon an EU-US FTA.